All right, welcome back, people. I'm Daniel for Rock the JVM, and in this video, we are going to discuss the Spark functionalities of repartition and coalesce. Now, this video is for the Scala and Spark programmers, particularly those Spark programmers that are starting to dive a little deeper into how Spark works and perhaps attempting to make it a little faster. So I'm expecting you to be at least familiar with the distributed nature of Spark and the concept of a partition as a chunk of data in an RDD or a data frame. So in this video, I'm going to discuss the commonalities and the differences between repartition and coalesce. Obviously, I will recommend that you code with me, and whenever you need to refresh your memory about these topics, just refer back to this video or to its written form at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog with the link in the description. All right, now let's go to our code. I'm going to work in an IntelliJ project with the Spark library installed. So I'll ask you to go to your build.sbt and add the Apache Spark, uh, org Apache Spark percent percent Spark core with um, version Spark 3.0 that I'm using in this video. All right, so you will need to add this library to your build SBT to be able to access the Spark functionalities. Now, I've just created a plain object here and I'm going to add a main method because we're going to test repartition and coalesce performance wise. Okay, now I'm going to start a little bit of a boilerplate by creating a Spark session and I'm going to define Spark as Spark session dot builder and I'm going to give this an app name let's call this repartition and coalesce and very importantly I'm going to hit master and I'm going to use local star to use all the threads on my computer to process all the data that we are going to in this video all right so use local start here to allocate as many threads as native to your computer and finally i'm going to call get or create to return a spark session now the functionalities that i'm going to demo in this video are completely applicable to data frames and rdds but uh, data frames are a little bit harder to simulate but so i'm going to operate in the rdd the low level realm of Spark, but the techniques here are completely applicable to data frames as well. So I'm going to create the Spark context here, usually named SC, as Spark.SparkContext. Now SC is the uh, entry point to the low-level RDD API, and so I'm going to demonstrate here with an um, RDD with a bunch of elements. I'm going to name this numbers as sc.parallelize, and I'm going to pass a quite big collection, one, two, 10 million here. So um, we have 10 million numbers, roughly 80 megabytes or so. And uh, I'm going to, uh, in main, I'm going to simply print line numbers partitions length. So if you do something like this, you will print the number of partitions that this RDD will contain. Now, if I go ahead and run this application, you will see here a number that is native to your computer. So if you wrote local star here under the master configuration in the Spark session, that means that by default, a new RDD will be split into a number of partitions that is equal to your number of virtual processors. And here in my output, I have 12. This is the number of native threads that my CPU can hold. For your computer, it might be something else, but ideally, this should be greater than two. So I'm going to use 12 partitions here as a reference. Ideally, you will have more than two partitions because we're going to demonstrate something. And I'm going to start with repartition. So repartition is a method which is available on both RDDs like this and data frames because it allows you to change the number of partitions that they are split into. This is particularly useful for when your partitions are very small and data processing is slow because of it. You can hit repartition on this uh, numbers RDD, for example, with a smaller number of partitions and your data will be redistributed between the, that number of partitions. So let's try to repartition this data into fewer partitions than the number of cores. I have 12 here, let's repartition to two. So I'm gonna say val, let's call this repartitioned numbers as numbers repartition two. So repartition, will take an, an argument here, which is the final number of partitions that the new RDD will contain. So in this case, we'll have two partitions. Now, I'm going to hit 
repartition numbers dot count, which if you uh, have some Spark fundamentals, you know that count is an action. That means it will trigger a Spark job. And uh, I'm really interested in how long it takes for this RDD to be evaluated. In other words, how long this repartition takes. All right. So repartition um, will incur a shuffle. So um, repartition incurs a shuffle. So you probably know this already. You know what a shuffle is. A shuffle is a data exchange between executors in your Spark cluster. So when we deal with Spark performance, we generally want to avoid shuffles, but if it's for a good cause, it might be worth it if your data pipeline is really big. So regardless of whether it's worth it or not, um, it's very important that repartition incurs a shuffle because we're going to contrast that with coalesce, which I'm going to explore now. So another method for changing the number of partitions of an RDD or a data frame is this coalesce method. It has a very similar API. You will simply just pass a number of desired partitions like the repartition call. So I'm going to call this coalesced numbers as numbers coalesce two. And at the end, I'm going to also call the count method. So I'm going to say coalesced numbers dot count to force the evaluation of this new RDD. So this will be another job. Okay. Now we are going to compare how long it takes for an RDD to be repartitioned into two partitions and how long it takes for an RDD to be coalesced into two partitions. Although these are two very similar methods of redistributing data, coalesce and repartition will work very differently. So we'll run this small test. We'll execute this application with the count action executed on both these RDDs. And in main, I'm also going to add a thread sleep because we are going to uh, look in the Spark UI to see how long these jobs took. All right, so at this point, I'm ready to run this application and as Spark is starting, we are ready to open a browser tab and say localhost 4040. And um, in just a couple of seconds, both of these jobs will be, will be evaluated. And we can see here from the table that the first job with index zero took three seconds. And this is the repartition job. So the repartition job took three seconds and the coalesce job took 0 0.1 seconds. So this is a massive, massive difference. Now, in order to explain why that is, we can click on both of these jobs and see how they were distributed. So uh, if you click on one of these jobs, you'll see this DAG over here for which we have an additional video on the Rock the JVM channel explaining how jobs are being split into stages and tasks with these DAGs. And uh, notice that this DAG contains two columns here, meaning that this job has two stages. And in between the stages, we have a shuffle. And the shuffle amount took an additional second. And uh, even though we have a shuffle read and shuffle write of just a few megabytes, this job took three seconds in total. So this is quite significant. Now, if we get back to the coalesced job, which took 30 times less time, notice that the DAG here just contains a single column, meaning that this job has a single stage. That means that there is no shuffle in the coalesce part. So, um, even though coalesce redistributes the data into two partitions, there is no shuffle. So coalesce has no shuffle. Now, uh, why doesn't coalesce incur shuffle since it also changes the number of partitions? Now, coalesce changes the number of partitions in a fundamentally different way. Now, instead of redistributing the data evenly between the new number of partitions, like repartition does, coalesce will simply stick together the old partitions into the new partition. So there's no data movement between all the executors, but only between those that are involved in the respective partitions. So coalesce doesn't incur a full shuffle, but rather stitches partitions together. Now, put in a different way, in the case of a repartition, each input partition will spread data evenly across all the output partitions. In the case of coalesce, each input partition is only included in exactly one output partition. So this will cause a massive performance improvement in the case of coalesce, uh, especially when you're decreasing the number of partitions like we're doing here. If you're increasing the number of partitions, then coalesce is identical to a repartition. So when you increase the number of partitions, 
coalesce is equal to a repartition. So it would seem that coalesce is always at least as fast as a repartition. So if you increase the number of partitions, coalesce is equal to a repartition, and when you decrease, coalesce is 30 times faster. So why ever do a repartition at all? Now, the fundamental benefit of repartition is uniform data distribution. So um, a coalesce, because it stitches partitions together, coalesce cannot guarantee the uniform data distributions because some partitions might, might be bigger than others. And because you decrease the number of partitions, some of those will run a risk of being much bigger than the others. And this might or might not cause problems later, depending on how skewed they are. We might talk about data skews in a later video on Spark. So uh, the conclusion is that repartition will redistribute the data evenly, but at the cost of a shuffle. So uh, repartition is pretty expensive, but it does guarantee your even data distribution. Coalesce doesn't do that, but it works much, much faster when you reduce the number of partitions because it just sticks partitions together. Coalesce doesn't guarantee the uniform data distribution, but coalesce is identical to a repartition when you increase the number of partitions. So I hope this was useful. I hope these 10 minutes were a good investment of your time because they will help you dramatically increase the performance of your Spark jobs when you deal with managing the number of partitions. So if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the Rock the JVM channel for more videos like this and uh, follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn for fresh updates on upcoming material. Now I'm dying for feedback, so please leave your comments right next to this video and check out the Rock the JVM website for lots of material on Apache Spark. I'm Daniel, signing off. <laughs>